mercy seat, meet with him, and from there God will speak. Uh, God, okay. God instructed Moses to use the mercy seat to meet with him, and from there God would speak with Moses to him to give him instructions on what um, he should do. When we come to Jesus through Mary, Jesus will reveal many secrets to eternal things in places beyond the stars. We know this from the lives of many of the saints and their writings, places they've been to. Have you, ever, have you guys ever heard of uh, bilocation? Mm-hmm. Okay, so where the saint can be in two places at once. People have reported seeing them in two places at one time. One person sees them at home reading. The other person sees them on the other side of town helping somebody. It's a common thing. Okay? Uh, it's a common thing, but among saints Among saints, saints only. only. Among saints. Excuse among me. Among saints, saints. Yes, this is a common thing to be found in few saints there. Okay. So, um, he will show you exactly what it is that you must do. Coming to Jesus through Mary is the most powerful and profound way of prayer and dialogue between you and Christ. It is, it is the powerful will of Mary's Son, Jesus Christ, that we all come to communicate with him from the mercy seat of the Ark of the New Covenant through Mary, Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom. That's what that means. Okay. St. Paul writes, okay, now we're going to you're going to learn here about the fall, okay, from the words of St. Paul. St. Paul writes in his epistle to the Romans, "Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned from until the law and for until the law sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law." Nevertheless, what um, uh, it, it didn't mean anything like. Uh, um, sin is not imputed. Yeah, yeah. Look it up. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't think it. I'll just ask my computer here. Yeah, I think imputed means. <laughs> imputed meaning is. Like it didn't count. It's a past tense. No. Past participle imputed. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, wow. Well, uh, ascribe uh, righteousness, <laughs> guilt, etc., to someone. Sorry, ascribe to someone by virtue of a similar quality in another. Christ's righteousness has been imputed to us. So okay. I guess, uh, so it's a form of so. Ascribed to someone. Okay. Something by virtue. Something has been given to someone. Okay. Yeah. But sin is not imputed us. when there is no law. Okay. Nevertheless, oh, yes. so you know what that means? Uh, yeah, go ahead. And tell so there's me. no sin. If there's no law, there's no sin. That's what that's trying to say. Yeah. So but, sin is not imputed. It's not given. It, it's not sin if there's no law. That's oh. what. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't mean anything like sin. Yeah. Okay. But there is law. Okay. Rest bed to all men because all sinned, right? For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Okay, so so when there was no law, then it, sin didn't count, kind of a thing, right? But if there's no law, how do we know? Like there, uh, like how uh, how how do you explain it? Like, well, well I, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I guess I, my background, um, you know, the, for crime, nothing's a crime until there's a law that says it is. Okay. That's kind of like what it is. So okay. you can, you know, stealing isn't bad until uh-huh. says you can't steal. Yeah, and then he goes, but then he goes on to say, this is St. Paul, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses. Okay? Mm-hmm. So we die. We die. We don't live forever because of Adam and Eve. Because of sin. Because of sin, right? Not because of Adam and Eve, because of sin. Yeah. Because of the choice. Okay. Until Moses. Even over those who had... Who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift, he's talking about Christ. I think I'm stuck here. Okay. Sorry. But the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one man, of the one, many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. The gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one transgression resulting in condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift arose 
from many transgressions resulting in justification. For if by the transgressions of the one death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So then, as though one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men, even so, through one act of righteousness there resulted justification of life to all men. For as through the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so, through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The law came in so that the transgression would increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. End quote. So everyone follow me? Follow, follow that, St. Paul there? Is that, right? So through Adam we all die. Through Christ we all live. Right, that, that's so, the choice. You're talking about Eve's choice, right? Because she's the one who first sinned. Mm, no. Mary, mm, mm, through her act of obedience, she's kind of like... We're almost there. Yeah. We're almost at that point, yeah. So think of sin like an infection like a plague that we can't see, right? We can feel because it separates us from God. And when we're connected to God, we know that love. We can feel, we understand that. We want to, we're drawn to it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, okay. So, so, the, so Adam, through him came death. So God had to make a new Adam, right? Through him that would be found life. God could have started a, another planet with another Adam and Eve, right? There. And they would, right? They could have been, right? Perfect. Yeah, they could have been, right? But we would have been left here to die, right? Because of sin. Because of God and who he is, he can't help himself. He has to do something because he loves us. He, God is pure love. If God didn't make a plan and do something to save these children who didn't know any better... He wouldn't be who he is, right? God wouldn't be who he is if he didn't devise a plan. So God had to create a new Adam and a new Eve inside of this mess. See where I'm going? Yeah. With the, okay. No? Okay, well, well, I'm getting there. Let's see. <laughs> Thus Jesus is the new Adam of the redeemed. And Mary is the new Eve of the redeemed. Through Mary's womb came forth Christ, making her the mother of every member of Christ's body. Were we not all born through Eve? And, right? Okay. Follow me. Now we're going. Okay. Every member of Christ's body. Adam and Eve were, were our first parents. God brought forth Eve from Adam's body. Remember his rib? Everyone know? Yeah. Okay, but they sinned and this. Is my, I'm writing this, but they sinned and passed down death to us all. Thus, God brought forth a new Adam, Christ, from the body of the new Eve, Mary. He's just, he's just talking about typology. I don't know. I'm just. I'm not sure what that is, but what's typology? What's that? Correct. I mean, sorry, with Jesus and Adam. Adam, yeah. So Jesus is a, you can say like a type of Adam. Right. Yeah. So, right. I'm getting, you'll get the whole, right, the reason, okay? Real quick, the, real quick, real quick. The reason why he's saying that is because that's in the Bible. So Paul t it says that. Yeah, Paul, that, that's Adam. what I'm trying to say. That Jesus, yeah. Jesus is the new Adam. Because we, we have a new Adam. Where's Eve, right? Well, people underestimate who, who Mary is. All right, but well, I'm going to keep, okay. Yeah, just let, we have to, let me just hear everything. Okay, <laughs> right? Because look, the original Adam was our father, right? And Eve, original Eve is our mother. So God brought the new Adam from Eve's body, Mary, making Jesus our brother and Mary our mother and God our father. That makes sense, right? Does that make sense? No? Does that make uh, Adam and Eve? So they ever hear oh, the old Adam and Eve? Yeah. Yeah, let's just start over. 
This is a start over time. Yeah. Yeah. This is a new beginning. Okay. Right. This is a new covenant. Right. Why did God? Okay. Every covenant that God made with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, so on, David, whatever. They all. What happened every time? They broke it. Why? Because they're human. The only person that could hold up the other end of the bargain was God himself. That's why God had to come here and make the deal with himself. Does that make sense? Right? All the systems, eh? Paul, yeah. Because we can't do it. We don't, we don't, we're not worthy enough, right? We screw up. It's in. Sorry. What's your question? I'm just trying to understand the... The Eve part. Okay. So, so sorry, one more thing, real quick. So, uh, just a quick um, typological analogy. So, Jesus, uh, Mary um, said yes to the angel. Eve said, said yes, yes to the devil. Said no. Said, well, she, she almost going said going yes in a bad Huh? Way. Where are you going with it, Jerry? Okay, <laughs> well, just, I'm going to say, it's okay. So, basically, it's a flip with the New Testament, right? With everything from the old. The old is bad. You're trying to understand Adam, right? Yeah. Okay, that's why I was reading the scripture from St. Paul, how he was saying through one perfect man, at, because Adam and Eve, in the beginning, God made them sinless, right? They were perfect until they were tempted and they ate the fruit, right? Okay, the one tree, right? Now we know why people don't, anyway. Okay, so, so through one perfect man, sin entered and death, entered the world. So through another perfect man, who was also divine, life entered the world. No sacrifice in the world would be worthy enough to be compared to pay the penalty for sin for all of mankind for every single generation from the time that the earth was made to the time that it will be destroyed except for God himself being sacrificed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I just say something? Yeah. Can you just say the whole thing and then have to end? Sure. 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 Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, from the body of the new Eve, Mary, making Christ our brother, Mary our mother, and God our father. This is why Mary had to be conceived without original sin. Just as Eve was. Because Jesus had to be born without sin as Adam was. Thus Jesus had to enter the world through his mother that was conceived without original sin. Lots of Protestants have a problem with this, okay? Yeah. Okay. Received without original sin. That Jesus would be perfect and unblemished sacrifice. How do we get how do we receive original sin? From who? From our parents, right? Mm -hmm. From our parents. And that's why we need to get baptized, right? <coughs> to get clean and then oh, yeah. Jesus restores what we have lost in our baptism because of his death on the cross, right? So Jesus could not have come from a parent that had original sin. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because otherwise it would have been passed to him and he wouldn't be in a perfect, right? You can't die for sin if you're sinful. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he didn't, his father is God. Perfect. He didn't have, God didn't have sin. Okay? God doesn't have sin. Right? So his mother needs to not have sin as well. So just as Adam and Eve were created without sin, so the new Adam and Eve also need to be created without sin. So how did God do it? Right? So perfect and unblemished sacrifice. Not inheriting the sin of death from his mother. Thus God who is outside of time, the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, Revelation chapter 1. Uh, this verse means that God is the beginning and the end. He is the past, he is the present, and he is the future, all at once. Right? Okay, so he's outside of the universe, outside of time. Made it so that his son's sacrifice in the future would apply to Mary's conception at the present time of her conception, right? So his sacrifice on the cross in the future, 
God used it to apply it to Mary's conception during the, his parents. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Mary. Yeah. Mary's conception at the present time that she would be born without the stain of original sin, that God can enter the world without the blemish of sin. Just as God used Christ's sacrifice on the cross to apply it to the past for the friends of God, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that had died before Christ's sacrifice transpired and used it for those who died during the present time of Christ's death, he also applied it to those whom will die in Christ in the future for all time just as you and I are benefiting from Christ's sacrifice long after his death now. Understand? So God used that in that because he can, right? Thus, God applied Christ's sacrifice on the cross to Mary's conception to create a new Eve, a perfect woman born without sin for a new, for, uh, a new Adam, a perfect divine man, to enter the world without sin making them the new Adam and the new Eve of the children of the redeemed. Okay? Mary is not divine. She was conceived without original sin specifically for, for Christ's birth. Jesus is both fully human and fully divine in nature. Thus, the only sacrifice that would be, that would be worthy enough to be sacrificed for the sins of the entire world to redeem all those whom desired to be saved would be God himself. Thus, Mary could have never gone to the cross for us. Because Mary is not God. Jesus is. He is God's sacrificial lamb. Hebrews chapter 10. Got it now? Okay. Everyone, okay. Jesus had to be the one who took the punishment for the sins of the world. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we were healed. That was a quote from the prophet Isaiah. Chapter, uh, chapter 53, verse 5. So he wrote that. This prophecy was written by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before Christ's death on the cross. God revealed to Isaiah what was to come in the future from the past, and Isaiah shared it with his people, the Israelites. That is what happened with all the prophets. This is just another example of how God's power and knowledge is not restrained to the present moment. He is in every time all at once and can make changes at any time in any age, however he pleases. Thus Mary was born without original sin in accordance with God's plan for a new Adam, Jesus the Christ, and Mary, the mother of God, the Ark of the New Covenant, the new Eve. For God's repentant children, perfected in righteousness by the blood of his Son and the good works of their hands, molded by Mary, our mother, preparing us for her son, living in accordance with God's law. On July 19, 1830, the Virgin Mary appeared to St. Catherine Labour and informed her to have a medal struck and what should be inscribed on the medal. On the front of the medal was an image of the Virgin Mary with rays of light coming from her hands, signifying that she receives graces from God for us. Around the image is a prayer, O Mary, conceive without sin, Pray for us who have recourse to thee. On the back of the medal are two hearts. One is the sacred heart of Jesus, and the other is the immaculate heart of Mary. Above the hearts is a large M, with a bar through the M, with a cross being held up by the bar. The M, which stands for, the, the, which stands for Mary, and the cross, which stands for Jesus, and the bar, which stands for, to Jesus, through Mary. Okay? He, it's the miraculous medal. Yeah. That's the miraculous medal. So that was given to us by Mary to St. Catherine of the Boer. And she has become a saint. And everyone knows how a saint, someone, the church says someone's a saint, right? Two healing miracles have to happen. So God creates the miracles and the church just acts accordingly. So whatever someone who is deemed a saint writes, and nine times, is, you know, it's not a lie, because <laughs> God wouldn't have made him a saint, right? And she's not just any saint, she's also an incorruptible saint. So, and that has a lot of, that's another story. Who's that an incorruptible she is saint? She is, a, no, no, St. Catherine of Labour. Do you know what is an incorruptible saint? What does that mean, incorruptible? It's like, it's like a, 
her body doesn't. They look. look it, it, That's it, from the it's kid. like if he's just asleep, she feels the same. If I'm dead for like, I don't know, 100 years and they look the same. It, it means flexible because we have rigor mortis, right? But these bodies seem to be flexible and for a time, they their decay process, it, 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 uh, um, it, it's, it's abnormally long. It doesn't, sometimes, you know, their bodies have a sweet smelling fragrance to them, like roses or flowers. Many of them look like they're sleeping and they've been that way for hundreds of years. Some don't, some decay. Some, some, some of the church, they tried to preserve the body uh, with some chemical and it ended up eating it, the chemical ended up eating it away. Others, they even try to put lime in the casket to speed up the process of decay, um, but uh, nothing happens. So, um, yeah, very interesting. In my opinion, in my opinion, the Bible talks about those who have died and those who have fallen asleep. In my opinion, just saying my opinion, I think these are the ones who have fallen asleep. There are approximately 200 incorrupt saints in the world. Incorrupt 200. Bodies are not uh, uh, incorruptible. Uh, Considered incorrupt. Uh, Science doesn't, they have no explanation. They don't know why. But they know that they all share the same properties or what have you. Yeah. So that's why, how they are defined. Interesting. Okay. So I don't know where I did or what happened or what the heck. Did, okay. Okay, hold on now. I can <laughs> Okay, I was okay. Hold on, I pressed the button. Okay. So, so, so sacrifice, okay. Thus Mary could have never gone to cross for us because Mary is not God. Jesus is. He is God's sacrificial lamb. Jesus had to be the one, okay, and the prophet, right? Okay. The prophecy, oh, wait, no, I got into the M. There it is. Okay. So, the, okay. Around the edge of the back of the metal are 12 stars that are representation of the 12 tribes of Israel. This medal is meant to be worn with confidence, signifying our love for Jesus Christ by paying homage to his most pure mother. This medal is named the Miraculous Medal. The medal also clarified theological speculations of Mary being conceived without original sin. This was further confirmed by the doctrine that was dogmatically defined in the Catholic Church in the year 1854 by Pope Pius V, who used the, his papal infallibility, stating that Mary was immaculately conceived without the stain of original sin. So how many people believe that the person that Jesus Christ left in charge of his church and the person that ends up getting selected to be in charge of his church, that Christ communicates with that person in a special way because he's in charge of the whole world in Christ's church. Does anyone think that at all in any way? I've never thought about that. At all? So, here, so, so, so Jesus specifically left St. Peter in charge. Right, so he left someone in charge of the other twelve. So, um, so this person will be will make decisions for the whole world that his church, wherever his church is. So I think that that you know, does God choose people out of people who are called? Yeah, He does. There's lots of saints, and there's lots of people who are not saints. So. I think, I think, believe, my opinion anyway, because it doesn't have to be yours, that, yeah, I think God does communicate in a special way to the Pope, in, in a special way, uh, to help him with his duties. I do think that. Um, so, papal infallibility is something that, I don't know the whole definition, I'm not even going to go there, but, anyway. Staying that Mary was immaculate to see without original sin. Then, only four years later, after this was instituted, the Virgin Mary appeared to St. Bernadette of Lourdes on February 11th, 1858, identifying herself to St. Bernadette as the Immaculate Conception. So Mary appeared, 
and told her, didn't say, I'm the Virgin Mary. Bernadette didn't know who she was. She, when she asked her who she was, she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. So does anybody believe about, how many people kind of believe apparitions or no? Oh, do I believe in apparitions? There's a maybe? Okay, there's a maybe. At least there's a maybe. Okay. How many people believe in St. Paul's story? His oh, yeah. conversion story? No. Did Jesus appear to St. Paul in the clouds? St. Paul, there, okay, there was a bright light. Jesus appeared in the sky. He saw him, knocked him off. He says, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And what, did, what was the first response uh, Paul said? Who are you? Right? So Jesus appeared then. He could appear to other saints now. And Mary, the new Eve, can probably has permission to do so too, apparently. So... And why is it that we why how, why is it that we listen? Uh, why why is it that the church even considers the thing that things that Mary says or appears or anything like that? Why does the why does the church even consider them? It's important, I think, because I read somewhere where it's like, what if she would have said no? You know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if Jesus. I don't know what God would have decided. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that. For her bravery, like she was, she's the mom, she's the mother of Jesus. Yeah. So I think that's why she's very important. Mm -hmm. Very, and I think also because like um, she's queen. I think she's yeah. everything. So. I mean, she's the mother of Christ, and Christ. if we, and if we listen to Christ and Christ appears in apparitions and all that, then what? Jurisdiction. I mean, what justification does, that his mother does, doesn't have? You know, other than the fact that she doesn't have the divinity of you know mm -hmm. God being in her exactly. But you know. So okay, so that's very good answers. So the reason why the church listens, or at least considered, especially after the first operations of the things that Mary was asking them to do, is for the simple fact that these apparitions of Mary were asking is the simple fact that everything she's asking us to do is in accordance with our faith. Mm. Nothing that she's asking us to do goes outside of that. Mm. That's why they listen to it because it's in a, Juan Diego, she get baptized. And he became a catechist, I think, later on. I think, I think I could be wrong about that, but baptized, you know, uh, make sacrifices for poor sinners in prayer and fasting and penance and these are all things that have to do with our faith okay and and love my son okay stuff like that, about that. yeah they would have they sure. question it right they question it of course they're going to look at it they scru very heavy scrutiny mm -hmm. there's tons of apparitions and stuff why would the devil tell us to love our neighbor for exactly devil so it's not a devil apparition or, or a demonic apparition it can't, if it was, it's evil, and it's gonna, some evil is going to come out of its mouth. Something, at least. Yeah. Something deceiving or evil. Correct. So it's got to be from God. Correct. Makes sense. These apparitions, they can't, when they're doing studies, they can't contradict or add new dogma. Correct. Add new dogma. Sorry. But yeah, I have a quick question. Yeah. I don't know if it's like, yeah, we had said in the beginning that, you know, we could uh, ask questions in, in the middle. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, I'm not quick. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, because, I mean, because we can choose to believe prior to Revelation, but I know, like, Fatima has, like, special consideration. But, like, um, what exactly is dogmatic about Mary? Because apparitions are helpful, but they're, they're more like privately than the Revelation. That's not necessarily... Like, what is... Yeah. What does the church teach about dogma? Yeah. That's, that might be one for you. Yeah, dogma. Well, we know what's dogma. Yeah, define dogma. Yeah, first. define it. Well, no, the dogma is a teaching of the church that's considered forever. You can't alternate it. You can't add true. to it. It's revealed truth that stay, that withstands the test of time. So, for example, the Pope can change teaching, but he cannot change dogma. For example, we believe that Jesus Christ is, is 
present in his body and flesh in the Eucharist, that set in stone. No matter what happens, no matter how much time passes, that is the gospel, meaning we cannot change it, not even the Pope can. Mm-hmm. Because it's revealed truth through the gospel. But wait, what if what what if a new dogma is created? A new dogma could happen through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Okay. But, but that being said, dogma cannot be changed the way it is, the way it's been handled through apostolic succession and Correct. tradition. Mm-hmm. So throughout the centuries, teaching dogma of Mary, uh, you know, she is the mother of God, she is immaculate, she is born without sin, um, that's set in stone, uh, handed down by traditions. Now, how do we know it's good dogma, how it strengthened dogma, well, it survived thousands of schisms, it survived thousands of heresies, and the church has been always set, been united around these set stone teachings of the church. Otherwise, they would have escaped immediately if it was due to our human fault. Mm-hmm. It was, it said also that... I might be not uh, answering your question. Directly. No, I think you got, I think you because did. Because there are, there is specific dogma about Mary, but I don't have to go to my notes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you're you're there. Because the Vatican II documents do go over the teaching of Mary, because they're reviewing it. Because so much has happened throughout the years before that set point. There's been a full review of what is uh, what's our belief in Mary. Well, let's do a review. So I would recommend to go for that document when the Vatican II documents, because that's kind of very fresh and kind of set up for a book. The dogma cannot be changed. The new dogma is possible, I think. But um, the ones we certainly know for sure are not for anyway. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. So, so, what was the question about? I don't understand the question. About what, what the teaching was on Mary. Because, mm-hmm. because we can choose to to believe apparitions. Uh, apparitions. Necessarily. Oh, you're asking if that's yeah, right. Do oh. we have the option to choose? Is that what you're asking? If it's, uh, well, the good, but devotion. Like, somehow devotion to our related, but a little bit. Sure. So right. Sure. That's Devotions cannot be forced onto another person. However, the dogma of Mary is, for example, she's immaculate, she's conceived without sin, said mother of God. Nothing can change those things. Those are wow. stuff. Yeah. So, and I give you an example. These are not just like. So, yeah, like a chosen few, like the children at Fatima saw, right? But how many people know who were there that witnessed this event? How many people know how many people were there? 70,000 people. I thought were, it was 100. 70,000 uh, people. Yeah. yeah, there was a quite a bit. 70,000 people were there, and these the little kids. And there's pictures. Correct, yeah. correct. The miracle of the sun. So, mm-hmm. so during that time, only the children could see her. So many people came out to see what was going on. And the sun, they were, it's in newspapers, you can look it up. It, they say it turned on its axis. They thought it was the end of the world. They didn't know what the heck was going on. They thought it was truly the end, all praying, all kinds of stuff. People that were in the crowd that had incurable diseases were cured. All kinds of miracles happened that day. And that's not the only apparition that that same types of things happen. The devil destroys, he ruins things, he kills. He doesn't build up and heal and restore lives and people and, and, and bring life. That's God. God does that. Only God does that. Okay? And God's showing us that he loves his daughter Mary and she's bringing us to Jesus Christ. Right? She's not saying, you know, worship me or anything, nothing like that at all. Trust in my son. If you serve me, and you know, she's the queen. She says, of course, she's going to say use words like that, right? Okay. When people get it confused. They just hang on that one little. Oh, she said serve me. Just quickly, the four specific dogmas of Mary: the divine motherhood, uh, made by the Council of Ephesus in 431, perpetual virginity, immaculate conception, and the assumption that she went by the soul. Those are the ones that. No negotiation on now the rest of the operations that's her way of revealing herself to us now whether you choose to dedicate yourself to a particular operation that's your own private devotion Correct. cannot be forced on others but when it comes down to it those are the four things about Mary we cannot negotiate on this is almost done here so and then we can yeah high, high five <laughs> <laughs> um, um.
Thank you, buddy. Yeah. And I want to finish this. I want, I'm going to finish this real quick, and then I wanted to, if we could, show the vi video of Our Lady. Do you have time? Yes, we have to. Maria. Team. It's Jackie. Oh, Jackie. What? <laughs> are you kidding? Are you serious? Shoot, you know. <laughs> okay, keep on reading, keep on reading. We have the 915. Okay, no, okay. No, like 20, okay, okay, okay. I'll communicate quick. Okay. No, no, it's good. We have time. Okay. You'll want to see this video. It's you're, if, about apparitions. Okay, it's about Our Lady of Guadalupe, the image. So you guys can have a better appreciation of what's going on in there right now, okay? Okay. And, and this, everything you'll learn, it's in it. Okay. So. Um... Okay, Immaculate Conception. In the book of Revelations, John sees a celestial event in the sky when he was banished to an island for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then the, temp quote, then the temple of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there was lightnings, noises, thunderings, and earthquake, and an earthquake and great hail, end quote, Revelations 11, 19. Okay. Um, Quote, now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and pain to give birth, and another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was the... So notice that John saw the Ark of the Covenant in God's holy temple in heaven. Mm -hmm. Then immediately after that, he sees a woman. Mm -hmm. See the correlation between the Ark and the woman? Okay. The, the, no, okay. he's reading his... From That's the from the Bible. This is, this is this in is the Bible. Okay, so when your friends say Mary is not in the Bible, that's not biblical. That's not true. They're not reading good enough. They're not. They don't. Okay, they don't know. They're just st barking stuff off because they hear it from someone else and they don't know. They don't know what they're saying. Okay. <clears throat> uh, sorry, she bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God in his throne. Okay. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she was, where a place was prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,262 days, 60 days. Okay. That's just the end of the book. So she was protected by God even after her son, her child was taken up to heaven. Right. And we know that Jesus died before Mary, right? And we don't know if Mary died or if she fell asleep. This is uncertain, right? That's the thing about, about Mary's assumption is that it's not in the Bible. The husbands always say it's not in the Bible. Okay, but every church has remains of specific saints. We have the remains of all the apostles, but Mary's is missing and Jesus's is missing and Mary would have been with them because John he, they were, was protecting her. <coughs> she was with them. Not only that, they built her a tomb and she's not in it. Where did she go? Something happened. She either died or fell asleep because they made a tomb. Right? Yet, not the Orthodox Church, not the Catholic Church is much money and power and all those things and research and people to go and find and all the relics they found in crazy weird places and they just they retrace all the steps and everything and Mary is nowhere to be found the most influential woman in all of history remain can't be found that's where this comes from plus because of all this other evidence too was it would Mary would Mary have been the first one we say assume not ascend right Ascending is something only God can do. Jesus ascended into heaven, right? Because that's, that's saying you have power. Being assumed means Amen. from heaven someone brought you there, right? Okay. So, so is Mary the first one that's ever been assumed into heaven? No. Elijah, Elijah was assumed into heaven in a whirlwind. Okay. Okay. 
in the book of Jude, when Moses, when Moses died or fell asleep in the mountains, Satan and the archangel Michael were arguing over the body. Okay? And Moses' body has never been found. I'm pretty sure Michael won that battle because he's won it before. So, <laughs> so, so, so we don't know if Moses was assumed, but his remains were never found either. It's not like they haven't been looking for him for I don't know how many dang years to try and settle what's who's right. <laughs> okay, so they can't find him either. Okay, so so we believe probably maybe I mean it's not said it's, we haven't like it's not dog murder. Okay. How interesting that the Apostle John saw the Ark of the Covenant in God's holy temple in heaven and then immediately after he sees a woman wearing a crown of 12 stars. Because Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant, thus she was about to give birth to her male child, Jesus, that the fiery red dragon was trying to devour. Sounds like a rivalry between the dragon and the woman, between her seed and his seed. Okay? Thus the queenship of Mary, the Ark of the New Covenant, mother of Christ, mother of the redeemed, is very biblical in origin. For God has chosen her from the beginning in Genesis to the end in Revelations. Thus we proclaim with our faith in Jesus Christ, in honor of his dear sweet mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Hail Mary gives praise and worship to Jesus Christ and gives honor and respect to Mary, his mother, and identifies her as royalty, just as the archangel Gabriel so wonderfully did at the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is by this prayer that we true followers of God sit in the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant to speak with Christ from the hands of Mary, bringing Jesus Christ true God and true man into our lives in the most profound and powerful way, receiving instruction and guidance unlike any other form of prayer that any Christian has prayed before. For it was through the Ark of the Covenant that Moses spoke with God, and it is through Mary, the new Ark of the Covenant, that all can have a relationship with their son Jesus Christ that far surpasses any relationship that they already have with Jesus. To Jesus through Mary forever, for it is the will of God that all Christians strive to become saints. And it is through Mary to Christ that saints are made. And that's it. Yay.